Hospital Shalom is located in the northern part of Guatemala as a quite a poor area and Hospital Shalom has a very special place in my heart as well as my dad's heart not only because it was the first place that I've done prosthetics internationally but they do it so well and they have a Guatemalan national staff down there that is able to follow up with the people that we see uh, for prostheses. My name is Tim Spurrier. Uh, if you want to be formal, the Reverend Timothy A. Spurrier. It just seemed like everywhere I went, uh, every village I walked into, uh, the first question they'd ask me, are you the one that's coming to build us a hospital? So obviously the need was there. My wife and I decided that we would come to the Bataan and we would build a hospital. And uh, uh, originally we thought it was going to be in one of the, the smaller villages, but then we realized that it wasn't just the small villages that needed a hospital, it was everybody in the Paten. The Paten is now a little over a million people strong, and uh, you know we, we got to have the doors open to all of them. We do a lot of different kind of teams. We have prosthetic teams come in and, and work like, like it's working right now. Uh, we have doctors, surgical teams come in. We had a, a group of doctors come in last year where we were doing uh, cervical cancer screening in women. Uh, we have all kinds of different groups that come down. We're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to uh, have top world-class medical service to whoever comes through the door for a price they can afford to pay. And if you look in, in history, in the medical field, that's never been done before. Uh, if you do something that's never been done before, then you have to do things that you've never done before. <laughs> And and we're we're pretty creative at times. Uh, Jose was a young man, I believe, about 22 years old, who had lost his leg in a motorcycle accident, and he was a fireman before the accident, and actually still works with the fire department, uh, bombero as they call him. But Jose was um, very energetic and very friendly young man who had a short uh, left. AK amputation and uh, was eager to get a prosthesis. Hi, my name is Jose. I am a bombero, which is equivalent to a first responder. In Guatemala, it is a very distinct job to be a bombero because you are helping your people. But being a bombero is also a volunteer job and in that sense it gives me a lot of satisfaction because I'm able to help my people. The majority of the bomberos that I work with come from very poor families or families with little resources and that is one reason why we are able to relate so well to them. The accident <clears throat> that took my leg was at four o'clock in the morning and none of my bombero friends were there to get me. What had happened was I got trapped between a large platform and a car and it fractured my tibia, fibia, and femur as well as mangled my muscles on my right leg. My experience as a bombero helped me see that I was going to lose my leg but I needed to stop the bleeding to save my body. God gives everyone the opportunity to serve but I want to let the people in the U.S. that hear my voice know that I am touched by the acts of service of sending volunteers to help make my prosthesis. I'm a volunteer and I make just a little money, but my chances of getting a prosthesis in Guatemala is close to zero percent. Many others may get a prosthesis through the government social security program, but I am not a part of that program since I am a bombero and we are a separate autonomous organization. I just want to thank God for Samaritan's Purse doing what the scripture says to help one another in need. I don't know how to express myself. It is an inspiration to see what you have done for me by traveling such a great distance. I want to extend a great thank you for helping me realize my dream to walk again. Thank you for giving me hope. The prosthesis will allow me more job possibilities. I am excited and motivated to live my life. Thank you to everyone who has made my dream of walking become a reality. All in all, I feel like the experience that I had in Guatemala was uh, couldn't have been more enriching for me. It was more than I 
ever expected as far as the reward, the sense of um, participating. In. And I think all of the patients, there's something about the people there. They have this very strong will and determination and very grateful for the hospital and for what everybody there was doing for them. One of the patients that really sticks out in my mind is a patient, and in the field we call it a hip disarticulation, which means he has no femur. Carlos was uh, 19 years old and he had been through 10 rounds of chemo and just was in very bad shape. He ended up losing his leg, his whole leg, to the point that all that was left was his pelvic bone on his left side. Not only in Guatemala, but also here in the U.S. It takes a lot of work, specialized componentry, and we frankly didn't know what we were going to do with uh, this young man. So this particular case is very difficult because not, not only are you missing your ankle, you're also missing your knee and your hip joint. So when you have three articulated surfaces that you have to work with, it makes for a very technically challenging prosthesis. This whole system allowed this 19-year-old boy to walk again. I think the most emotional experience I had with any single patient was with the Kachi gentleman. He had lost his leg in a logging accident over 20 years ago and had made his own prosthesis by hollowing out a log and had done a pretty good job with it. Vincent had a small little foot, wooden foot, on the end of that log that he fabricated. On the first day, we evaluated him and casted him, and his expression and his gratitude just really touched me, made me realize how lucky we are in uh, this country. I actually consider Vincent a prosthetist. He had probably whittled on this thing many, many nights to make it fit better. I joked with one of the staff members there as Vincent was leaving that he would probably be modifying his prosthesis. Since he was a prosthetist, he'd probably be working on it himself. But he did walk very well when he left with the prosthesis. He looked like it's something he'd been waiting for patiently for 20 years, and he was really happy to get it and ready to get on with it. One thing that I really enjoy about working with Samaritan's Purse is their philosophy is that God deserves the best. And with that in mind, we send down new componentry, and each person gets a prosthesis just like they would in the United States. Prosthetics is really an interesting field because not only is it technically challenging, but it's also a very niche field that there aren't a lot of people involved with it. And for that reason, it makes the availability of a prosthesis to an underserved area very unique. One thing that I really enjoy with Hospital Shalom is that they are there to take care of the people really after we're left and gone, not only physically but spiritually.